So welcome everybody. This is Microsoft 365 and Power Platform Community Call. This is the Tuesday 8 a.m. Pacific time call where we always have Microsoft presenters with certain exceptions every now and then, but typically it's Microsoft uh, speakers. It's either going to be the PMs, engineers, developers, cloud advocates, or the people who built the stuff within Microsoft sharing you the latest and greatest around their own areas. Today, uh, we will probably have a bit less in attendance. It is December 19th, uh, especially in US, um, the holiday season is coming in. Uh, it, to Typically, Europe, this is the, the busiest week, uh, most likely, of the year in Europe, because all of the things are getting closed by end of the year and just before Christmas. Um, but that's typically is then visible on the attendance. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Today, we'll start again on the latest updates and news from Microsoft and Power Platform, latest news across Microsoft Flocks. Uh, we'll do the group uh, group picture uh, into together mode, and everything should be working on that, which is cool. And then we'll go to the actual demos of today, and we'll start with Marcel Ferreira talking about the Power Platform CLI, which had a recent uh, update. Um, and, we, and specifically in this demo, we're going to talk about simplifying authentication profiles. I think we had a blog post coming up on this one two weeks ago or so. And then uh, I'm going to do a live demo on uh, the new uh, Vivo Connection Advanced Card Designer capabilities with API support, uh, what it is, how does it actually work, what are the benefits on that. But basic idea there is that as a maker or builder within the Viva Connection dashboard, you're able to actually hit now APIs, uh, which is really, really cool. So you're able to create dynamic content within the dashboard uh, without writing code. And I'll show you a bit about the teaser, what's coming in the future on that as well. And then as a final topic, uh, not really a demo as such, uh, but we want to make sure that everybody is uh, up to date on this one. So we're going to cover some dates and, and updates there is the deprecation and end of life for SharePoint add-ins. Um, just to be specific there, this is specific for SharePoint adding model, which was introduced in 2012. It is now 2023. So it's more than a decade ago uh, introduced technology and we're dropping that within the SharePoint online. Uh, of course, SharePoint framework, all of those extensibility options, all of that is still available uh, within, the, within the Microsoft 365 regardless of closing in a chapter uh, with the older technology. Now, um, let's get moving. So, uh, of course, we have a lot of assets available for you to get started. We have our YouTube video channel, where you can always uh, see the, these community call recordings, a lot of other demos as well. And we're just processing uh, the existing community demos and all of that stuff. And we have a one demo going live uh, in every single business day from this day forward until early March. So everything has been scheduled automatically already within that channel. So a lot of, lot of new cool demos coming up on there uh, related on the demos, what you're seeing in the community calls. We have also a LinkedIn group where you can easily have a discussions and updates and sharing what your findings with other people in the in the community. A lot of open source and uh, assets available, uh, but it, as it might be a bit difficult to find the relevant GitHub repository for you, we have the sample galleries, which are really intended to make it easy for you to find the relevant sample which you're looking for. We just had the latest version on the sample gallery, the primary sample gallery going live actually yesterday. So there's some updates on the, on the filtering and mechanism, making it even easier to find find the relevant sample for you. All of our assets and initiatives and samples and toolkits and all of that can be found from AKMS community at forward slash home. Now, we do have a lot of these community calls, as mentioned. Uh, this Tuesday one is happening every single Tuesday, 8 a.m. Pacific time, except within the holiday season or in the summer time. So there's going to be always a few weeks breaks uh, here and there with throughout the year. That's specifically for holiday or summer time. So this is the last Tuesday call until the 9th of January. So within next Tuesday and the, the Tuesday after that, which is 2nd of January, uh, we will not have the Tuesday call. And next Tuesday is actually 26th of December. So it's a public holiday in the most of the most of the countries within the world. So we're canceling the Tuesday call. We'll be here probably showing still, uh, you know, call is being canceled. And if there's any questions, we can probably help on that. But there will be no presentations within uh, next call, next two weeks within this Tuesday call. Now, Power Platform Office Analysts, they have their own monthly community call. Course, the next Power Platform community call is happening tomorrow at uh, uh, quickly confirming uh, 8 a.m. Pacific time, as, and there's three presenters there as well. Our Thursday series, uh, which is Microsoft 365 and Power Platform community call or Viva Connection and SharePoint Framework community call is happening actually within upcoming weeks as well, but we'll focus on having a coffee and tea with the community. So if you have questions, Q&A style discussions, uh, live, we can do potentially live demos based on what you're looking for and what kind of questions you have uh, within those calls. So it's going to be more Q&A style discussions 
discussion. Uh, if, so if you're around, feel free to join. And there's going to be me, David, a few others in the community members definitely present within those calls. See, David, I just promised you to be on those calls. Haha. <laughs> now, um, all of these goals uh, have a lot of, lot of opportunities to present, uh, and we always welcome the community presenters as well. So this is a great opportunity for you to gain some uh, presentation experience. And the easiest way to sign up is to go to AKMS Community uh, Request Demo. We do not welcome product demos, but if you build something, if you use some new cool feature, you test out already the Copilot Studio, and you would like to share your learnings related on how it works and all of that, those are welcome demos. Uh, we, we are more than happy to get you scheduled within upcoming community calls in the suitable call. You fill in the form based on the uh, the subject and the title, what you're planning to planning to present. We'll get you then scheduled within the within the upcoming calls. So really, really easy way uh, to get that slot uh, confirmed for you. Uh, we also have uh, assets to get available in the Microsoft 365 Cloud. So easiest way to get your own free Microsoft 365 tenant is to subscribe to Microsoft 365 Developer Program. You will get a free E5 Developer tenant with 25 accounts. And if you use that tenant for developer purposes, it will automatically renew every single 90 days. We also have a lot of, lot of, lot of learning material available from the Microsoft Learn, uh, which are free uh, to learn how the Microsoft 365 or Power Platform can be extended and used uh, within your environment as well. Uh, we we also have a different uh, podcast and video so sh shows. So we have the BMP Weekly, uh, which is also on holiday break uh, right now. That's hosted by me and Waldeck Mastercards. We have the Mondays at Microsoft, hosted by Kar Karuana Katimu and Heather Cook. And then we have the Microsoft 365 Developer Podcast, which is coming back in January again with new episodes, hosted by Jeremy Thake and Paul Schaffelin and Aisha Bass, depending on the episode. I already mentioned uh, our sample gallery. We actually have more than 700 and 80 samples within this gallery. So new samples are getting added there almost on a daily basis from Microsoft and from the community. So we're kind of aggregating all of the samples throughout the GitHub repos and organizations to a more usable location. Rather than using Google or Bing to find the sample from thousands or hundreds of, of repos within a GitHub, you can actually use the simple search queries within this location and you can easily find the relevant sample what you're looking for. Then when you find the sample, it's referencing the GitHub repo, and it might be wondering on, hey, well, okay, what does this mean? How do I get started? How do I actually use the GitHub? I don't know what I'm going to do. Help me, help me. And that's why we have Sharing is Caring initiative, and David Warner is going to quickly recap what this is all about. Yes, thank you, Vesa. So what is it all about? It is about helping you, uh, but in a live format, right? Which is a safe space because we don't record it. So we know we're trying to scale this. We've mentioned that we are getting it set up. Office hours are beginning the week of January 8th. So keep an eye out on those websites for that to be able to schedule your office hours. More of an open, relaxed opportunity if you want to come in and ask questions. We are still getting those recordings set up and we're going to have live sessions to walk you through from A to Z on how to contribute and use these samples, but it'll be a little less frequent so that we can scale. And of course, once you have contributed though, we want to recognize you for all the amazing work that you're doing. So everybody is loving the recognition program. Don't worry, 2023 is almost over and your opportunity to get those badges is almost gone. So get those season to get in, get those slice of samples, but it is not the end of the road for us. We are absolutely committed to 2024 and I'll be spending some time over the next couple of weeks getting those 2024 badges set up. So if you've not opted in, do that, aka.ms slash community slash recognition and we'll keep track of all the amazing contributions you're making and make sure you are recognized. That's a back to you in the Finland studios. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent, David, uh, from the LA studios. Excellent. LA community studios, right, David? <laughs> That's right. We are gobble, gobble, all gobble. around. Yes. Gobble, <laughs> gobble, gobble. What? 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 Anyway, um, <laughs> anybody who joined the call when we started the recording will be like, what? 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 That was a reference to an earlier discussion just before the call. Anyway, uh, quick recap on on what's coming on the next year. We do have a lot of uh, cool conferences coming up. So first of all, we we have the April 13th, uh, May 1st and 2nd. We have the Microsoft 365 conference happening at the Disney World in Orlando. Uh, great, great, great conference. A lot of, lot of uh, new information around the uh, co-pilot, AI, automation, Microsoft Teams, Power Platform even is covered there. 
and a lot of cool workshops, uh, pre pre uh, conference workshops um, and sessions uh, presenters by Microsoft uh, executives as well. So a lot of other cool stuff happening there. You probably want to check out the URL microsoft365conf.com and register. It, it, 365 Educon happening next year in Seattle, DC and Dallas, like in a previous year, June, August and November. Great, great, great conference as well. And then we have uh, the Power Platform Conference happening in Las Vegas in September 18th to 20, 2024. Awesome, awesome conference as well. Um, and that was a really, really cool uh, uh, keynote setup uh, within the last year, uh, within, as we can see from this picture as well, it's right behind of Charles, uh, Charles Lamana's back. Now, on top of these um, primary conferences, so to say, we do have uh, community-led conferences and small conferences happening throughout the world. Great opportunities of getting engaged with the community. And some of these are in-person, some of these are hybrid. Uh, it, those are great opportunities for you to present as well. So have a look on what's coming and what's available for you to join at communitydays.org. That's the one centralized location to know all of the upcoming community events uh, across the world, which is really, really cool. Now, on the news site, uh, we're slowing down clearly and uh, not that many news this week, which is as expected as we're heading to the holiday season, but quite a few news from the Microsoft Teams side, Viva side as well, and from the Microsoft 365 developer side and Power Platform side, a bit slower uh, uh, from a news perspective, but all of the news within the chat. Thank you, David, on copying those. I'm not going to call them out one by one in here. Uh, but before we go to the actual demos of the day, let's do a quick group photo for those who are willing to enable uh, their camera. Let's see if I can actually flip things to get a mode here. Let me start Camtasia. And hopefully we can get everything to work properly today. Let's see how this actually goes. We've been having every now and then a bit of an hiccups within the uh, within the together mode. And unfortunately, it seems to be that we have a hiccup in the together mode. Uh, let's see if we can actually get this moving. Let's go to gallery. And if nothing else, we're going to do a gallery picture. So that's fine. The gallery picture is working. Let me try to flip together mode. Crossing fingers. No. What if we do large gallery? Come on, teams. I want to see those holiday sweaters. That's really good, Stephanie. But we can't see them. No, teams. No, 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 no. OK, so the gallery is working. Uh, so let's do this. Um, I think we are limited on X number of uh, attendees in here. That's fine. Uh, let me start the recording in a second. This is much better than nothing, uh, for sure. Uh, I'm going to hide the chat for now. And uh, let me put the recording on. So let's do some hand waving. Uh, it's not a together mode, but still we are all here. Um, thank you for joining. Awesome to see those sweaters as well. <laughs> we should have actually had a holiday sweater uh, competition. Excellent, excellent, brilliant, brilliant. We do a GIF animation out of that for sure. So stopping that one. Cool, cool. Unfortunately, together mode not working today again. We need to figure out what's actually causing that. But. Let's go to the actual stars of today. Well, at least there's a one star uh, who's Marcel Ferreira. I want to call myself as a star. Uh, so that's that always makes me feel bad. So let me go in here. Dear Temptation, let's go away. So Marcel is going to start with Power Platform CLI, simplifying auto navigation profiles. Then we're going to talk about the introduction of new Viva Connection Advanced Card Designer capabilities with API support. Long title for that demo. And then uh, I'm going to talk about deprecation and end of life for SharePoint add-ins and what that means in practice. And just recapping on that announcement, uh, which came out uh, a few weeks back. But Marcel, I think you are ready to go from your side. Yes, I'm not sure about the star part, but I'm ready to go. Just checking. Every, uh, can you hear me okay? Yep. Yep, order is good. Order is good. Okay, uh, my screen should be coming through. Yep, we can see the screen. Take it away. Okay, you're ready to go. Okay, hello, everyone. Uh, I, I love this community because I really love. So um, I'm Marcel Fajeda. I am a senior product manager in the Power Apps Pro Developer team. And uh, what we do, what I like to say it is for our platform is for everybody, including professional developers or code first developers. And this is what my team does. We build tools for developers, people familiar to code who also wants and can benefit uh, using Power Platform. Okay. And today we will cover uh, Power Platform CLI. Uh, we also call PEC CLI. So Power Platform CLI is a one-stop command line interface to interact with Power Platforms. 
So if you are used to uh, terminals, if you are used, if you want to write scripts, Power Platform tools, Power Platform CLI is a great tool. You should you should know it. And uh, we did a couple of changes for Power Platform CLI uh, in terms of authentication. Obviously, you have to authenticate. We have to be secure, and this is what I want to clarify. The tool has been growing. We have been adding lots of features and functions. And I want to clarify how authentication works and how it's a lot better now. Okay. Uh, always worth to mention the easiest way for you to, to use Power Platform CLI is through VS Code. If you're using VS Code, you just need to install this extension called Power Platform Tools. Then you have Power Platform CLI. Once you install, all you have to do is to open the terminal. So let's see the terminal here. And here I can use back CLI. Okay, before we start to use CLI, let's review a few concepts of Power Platform. So we have a few portals, right, to interact with Power Platform. Uh, one that I will show here is what we call PPAC, or Power Platform Admin Center. Uh, PPAC is for you to manage environments and settings, not only for Power Apps, but also for Power Automate, Power Pages, all the components. And this is usually for your tenant. It means it is not environment specific. So here you can see I am in PPAC. I have a list of my, my environments. I can check the settings, but I, I am not looking at one specific environment. Okay, This is what we call admin functions. And if you see here, the user that I'm using is admin one, because here I am the administrator. I'm the admin persona. Okay, So that's PPAC. Uh, let's, let's review another portal, which is the maker portal. So that, this is the Maker Portal. is basically a development platform for business apps. Here you can create uh, Power Apps and other components. And this is backed up by Dataverse. Dataverse is the data platform that comes with Power Apps and allows you to store and model your business data. Okay? And you, when you are dealing with uh, Dataverse, you have an environment. Uh, the environment list that we saw in PPAC, here I am in one of these environments. So I am in the dev environment, and this is uh, basically where I create my components. And if I come here to solutions, here I have all the solutions that I created in this environment. Okay, So this is the maker portal or Dataverse. And I say Dataverse because this is where my data is stored. So these are the two concepts that I want to reveal. Let's go to PACCLI. So now we will understand a little bit how we authenticate. Ah, I forgot to show. Here I am with another user, which is Dev1. So this is my developer hat, okay? the developer persona. So let's go back here to CLI. I am in VS Code. This is the terminal view. What I will do is I will do pack out list. This is to show the list of authentication profiles. Here I'm already authenticated and I am analog to the to the portals that I show. So here I have two profiles. Check the kind uh, uh, column here. Uh, let me just, uh, yep, this is better. So for one, this is my admin user. The admin user is the admin kind and the dev one is the dataverse kind. So I have two authentication profiles, notice, both of them are active. Uh, so when I use PAC CLI, for example, if I want to see the list of my environments, what I do it is PAC admin list. This will show all the list of my environments. Okay, And here is similar to PPAC. I'm seeing all the environments. I don't have an environment context. Doesn't matter what environment I'm logged in. So I'm using the admin profile. Okay. Uh, let's say now I want to see the solution list of my dev environment. Okay, so this profile here, Dataverse, is connected to my dev environment. So if I come here and do pack um, solution list, this will return the list of solutions of my dev environment. Okay, so that's why we have two profiles and both of them are active. This can be confusing and it is confusing. That's why we are changing. Here is the important part. We are changing that. We are simplifying that. We have a new kind of profile called universal profile. The universal profile, you can run admin and also Dataverse functions in only one profile. So you don't need admin profiles. You don't need Dataverse profiles anymore. And you will have only one uh, profile active. So this is what we do now. I will clear all my authentication profiles and I will start to use my tool from scratch because I want to show a cool thing as well. So to do that, I will do pack out clear. 
this will clear all the authentication profiles in my machine. So I will start from a clean state. If I do pack out list, I don't have any authentication profile. Okay, and if you are not following, if you never use pack CLI, now is the part you need to pay attention. Okay, I will close VS Code down now. I will start to use as I am a new user. So I will open my VS Code again. I don't have any authentication profile, right? So here I will open. I already have Pax CLI installed. It will restore my 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 history here, but I will show I don't have authentication profile. Yes, I don't have any authentication profile, right? So here's the thing. Every time this is the new feature, every time you try to use a command which requires authentication, what Pax CLI will do under the hood it is it will try to use your Windows account. If your Windows account is linked to AAD, Pax CLI will use that to try to connect to Power Platform. And if you have a Power Platform environment related to it, it will create a profile for you. So here is the UI of uh, VS Code. It already created the profile. I will close this to show Pax CLI how it looks like. So if I do again pack out list, here you can see I have a new uh, authentication profile. And this is the universal kind, and the type here is operational system. So if you are a Windows, Pax CLI will try to create for you, and it will just work. If you if you're not using a Windows account uh, connected to AAD, or if you want to connect using another account, that's fine as well. All you have to do is you can use pack out create. You can do that from the UI here as well, but I'm showing pack CLI. Okay. So if I do pack out create, uh, it will pop up a window so I can authenticate. Here I will use my dev one and done. I have a new profile created. And it is connected to my default environment. So my default environment is called personal productivity. If I do pack out list, I will have two profiles now and only one active. Okay. Both are the same user, but this has been created automatically. And I can know by the type operational system. And I have another one here of type user. Okay. If I already have a profile, uh, it will not try to auto create this one. Okay. So what I will do it is I will just pack out delete. And I will pass a parameter I of index one. I will delete the automatically created. And now I have only one profile. Okay. And if I want to see a list of environments, uh, pack admin list, I will be able to. This is using my admin profile under the hood. Okay. And if I want to see the solution, I can also do, but we are now connected to personal productivity environment. If I want to change my environment, all I have to do is pack uh, and and select, and I will pass a parameter end of environment, and I can use the name or I can use the ID of my environment. I will use this ID here. I want to connect to dev environment. I will copy, I will paste. Okay, hang on. Yep. Uh, well, I'm trying to paste. This is not working, but that's fine. Let me connect to the test environment. Let's skip that, or let's use the UI. Yeah, I can use the UI as well. And I just have this error because copy and paste is not working. I am on a VM, but that's absolutely fine. Now I am connected to dev environment. There you go. If I do pack out list, I am connected to dev environment. If I do a pack solution list, I will have the list of my dev environment. Okay, so a cute. let's review what we did and a few takeaways. Uh, we used to have two different profile types, admin and dataverse. We don't need those anymore. All you need is a universal profile. Every time you try to create a new authentication profile, by default, a universal one will be used unless you use uh, this specific parameter uh, URL. If you use URL parameter, if you want to specify a URL to connect, it will still use a dataverse type. We are changing that. Basically, what we are doing it is every time you create a new environment, a universal profile will be used. You don't need that mean you don't need dataverse anymore. Those will keep working. If you have automations, if you are using these uh, authentication profiles, you are fine. We are not breaking. It will keep working, but we are making harder to create these profiles. You always will create a universal profile. 
Okay. If you want to learn more about PEC CLI, check our documentation is aka.ms slash power dev. Okay. aka.ms slash power dev. You will have all the information about PEC CLI and about our team as well. So if you need anything, get in touch and please try PEC CLI today. It's a lot simpler now with authentication profiles. And uh, Veza, back to you. Excellent, thank you, Marcel. Really, really cool stuff, and, and great simplification for the for the automation steps. Definitely, awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. Good, good, good. Let me then go to my screen, um, and apparently, I'm the one presenting for the rest of the day. Um, so, hopefully, this will not be a monologue. So, please be active on the chat as well. I'm trying to follow up on things if there's any questions now. So two demos from my side. Uh, we're going to talk about the Viva Connection Advanced Card Designer capabilities with API support. And if there's any questions on that one, please let me know. And then the second completely separate discussion is about deprecation and end of life for SharePoint add-ins. But let's go to these one by one. Now let's start with a Viva Connection. Uh, Connection Advanced Card Designer Capabilities with API Support. It's a massively long title, uh, but I'll let me. I'm going to do live demos and explain what this is all about. But technically, what we can do with this new feature, which is currently in public preview, you are able to use APIs within Viva Connection Card Designer. You might not be super familiar with Viva Connection. You might, might not be super familiar with Card Designer. I'll show all of that for you in a second. Basic idea here is that you are able to have a easy way of communicating uh, with your frontline workers or your employees in general, regardless of the device, what they're using. So Viva Connection is all about providing you that primary communication, corporate communication channel for sharing news and updates and most easily, most commonly used tools uh, for your frontline workers or for your uh, employees, regardless are they using desktop or a tablet or a Viva, uh, sorry, or mobile. Um, even personally, I've actually started using Viva Connection uh, mobile quite frequently because it is surprisingly great tool for accessing the information like the next salary day or the weekend submitting a vacation uh, times and all of that. So there's a lot of, lot of power on the Viva connection uh, in a mobile experiences. Again, uh, daily employee experiences, communications, uh, there's tools and apps which you can surface uh, as a targeted for your end users. You can easily access your resources. So for example, the, the links and tools and all of that directly from the Viva connection. Viva connection also, by the way, is completely free. The baseline Viva connection doesn't require any licenses, all of that. So it's, it's really providing that personalized communication uh, channel on top of uh, the SharePoint experiences as well. So this does not remove the SharePoint experiences. It abstracts the SharePoint experiences and amplifies or, or makes it even better. Now, we talked about already uh, the fact that there's three different experiences. We have the desktop experience, which is evolving quite significantly. This picture is missing actually the desktop announcement uh, features, which is already on. We have the tablet experiences and the mobile experiences. But basic idea, again, is that regardless of which device the end user is accessing, they can easily stay up to date with the uh, community uh, company information and they can easily access the most widely used applications and tooling by using those cards. And now with this new feature, uh, we are not just uh, asking people to build those cards and extensibility using a SharePoint framework or using bot framework. We can actually create craft powered API, craft API powered cards just by using adaptive card functionality. And that's actually really, really cool. So in general, Viva Connection provides a powerful and extensibility platform. You can design different kind of experiences based on the, the company requirements. And then the advanced API support here means the following. You're able to, uh, if you enable the setting in the tenant level, I'll show you this step by step today. Uh, you will have to do this. Tenant administrator needs to enable the feature. After that, it will actually enable the card designer to have an option of hitting APIs. And that means that you are able to build uh, simple cards which are dynamic. As an example, the pictures which you can see on the right side, uh, my upcoming meetings or my latest emails. These are dynamic cards, which are, can be then easily accessed using the mobile phone or your desktop, uh, among the other cards within a dashboard. And they can show you the latest information uh, by hitting the graph APIs and then surfacing that information within the uh, card designer. 
Uh, administrator, uh, only administrator approved Microsoft Graph APIs are available to be used. And the first preview version is released in December 2023. So this is already available. Uh, there's a documentation link below there. And this will actually get more evolved within 2024. So we're working on an updated version uh, already to make it even easier. And for example, there's a discussion on maybe the card designers should be talking with Microsoft uh, Power Platform connectors to get those API connections in place and all of that. So there's potential directions where we might be going with this one uh, based on the feedback, what we're getting from the companies. Now let's actually have a look on what does that mean in practice. So I'm going to actually start by not having a super polished uh, a dashboard. I'm going to start by having a clean dashboard uh, to show you what it means in practice to enable the feature and also what it means that the card designer can be used to de decorate uh, the dashboard. So again, the card, the, the, the Viva Connection dashboard typically have a lot of cards, but we do have a clean one uh, today uh, because we want to start from a clean one just to show you how to use this in practice. Uh, I'm going to start by creating a, a card here, and in this case, we're going to concentrate on the card designer. Obviously, out of the box within Viva Connection, we're providing a lot of, lot of different capabilities and cards. You're able to do cards which are dynamically linking the bots, Teams application, power platform apps. Uh, so one option, for example, for Viva is that if you have a lot of power apps, but your, your end users can find the relevant power apps for them, you can actually aggregate them directly within the Viva connection. That's one way of then accessing easily the, all of the different core power apps within your tenant. Now, in our case, uh, we really want to focus on the card designer. And the card designer is something which me as an end user or the person who has the permissions of creating this and design dashboard can actually modify and make the card look nicer. So in my, my case, we could do something like my, uh, my upcoming meetings. Uh, and then we can select the icon here. I can change the icon to be something, for example, calendar check mark, doesn't really matter. Uh, we can we can do adjustments. We can adjust the card size to be medium, large, and whatever we want. Um, and the card action, what happens when a user clicks the card. So we could be redirecting to the Power Apps, Teams application, bot discussion, or we could do something else like show a uh, quick view. Now the quick view is something which means that you're not redirected, you're already surveying information from that application directly within the dashboard. And that's kind of the option here. Uh, let's call this one uh, by emails. And then when you click that one, we're going to show quick view. And then the key point here, as we get started on creating these things, we can actually see, let me do here, uh, where do I, where is the apply button? There's no apply button. Let me publish that. Just to see first uh, that we are actually already adjusting things. It's saying my upcoming meetings. Let me go back in edit mode. The thing what I was about to say uh, or update is this one. My meetings and we can see live. Uh, my up uh, my upcoming meetings. So we can see live all of the adjustments what we can see on the dashboard. Now in my case, um, it's actually by default saying this advanced features have not been enabled by the administrator. And this is because within this tenant, which I'm using, we have not yet enabled the advanced API features. And I'm going to, we're going to walk through all of the steps now uh, within this demo to understand how we can make that happen. So let me actually do republish. And let's actually then start looking into how do we oop, how do we make all of those functionalities available? So first of all, if I run set uh, sorry get SBO tenant uh, using the SharePoint Online PowerShell, which is the way we are controlling and adjusting the settings, we can see this setting here, which is is data access in the in card designers enabled. This is a new property which is available in a new SharePoint Online PowerShell uh, versions. I think starting from late uh, November. I think we had actually two releases since uh, November, um, but both of them actually have this setting. To be able to use the APIs, I will actually need to enable that setting, um, and I have the setting here. And so set SBO tenant uh, dash uh, is data access in card designer enabled, and I want to put that value to true. And that will then enable the API functionality within the card designer. Now, if that's the case, let's go then on here and uh, let's go to the edit mode. Let's modify the card. And if I now scroll down, we can actually see that we have a bit of an additional settings. Not yet, actually. Let me do republish. 
Let me refresh. Hopefully we don't actually run into two bad caching situations. There we go. And let's go to the edit mode and let's try it again. Yes, now the settings are available. There we go. So what happened here is that it's no longer saying that any advanced scenarios are not available. It actually gives us the data source option. The data source option to call SharePoint API or to call Microsoft Graph API. So what this means is that then, then we're able to use our template JSON as an adaptive card output together with some API call output and to combine and create a dynamic view within the dashboard, within that card, within the quick view of the card. So whenever I the button is being clicked, what is actually being shown in here. Now, in my case, in this tenant, we do not have yet any permissions uh, for Graph APIs enabled. So I'm gonna walk through how do we do that? And then we're gonna build two different cards uh, together uh, within a dashboard, one for the meetings and one for the emails. So I'm gonna actually cancel uh, this one for now. And we can do a quick republish um, and close on things. Now, there's a few things what we need to make sure that uh, that are functioning properly. So we need to go to the admin. We need to make sure that we have app catalog within a tenant. By default, a SharePoint or by default, Microsoft 365 tenant does not have an app catalog. So we need to actually create that uh, for SharePoint. And it's a bit of a bummer that it's not by default there, but we can easily create that by going to the SharePoint Admin Center underneath the advanced view, uh, underneath the settings, you know, underneath the more features. Now that I'm actually remembering the right path, we have the app section in here. And first time I'm clicking that open, it will actually make sure that our app catalog is created. So now in my case, the app catalog already exists. So I'm being redirected to the app catalog here. But if it would be not existing, it would actually create the app catalog to be available for SharePoint framework solutions. And these same solutions are being used uh, by the, the, the card designer. The second thing what we need to double check uh, in our case, because we don't have any SharePoint framework solutions in here, the API permissions which we have granted for SharePoint framework solutions actually also apply for the card designer. So by default, me as a card designer, I cannot hit any random APIs in Microsoft Graph because that would be potentially a security risk. Um, with that card designer, for now at least, is following up on those permissions which have been granted for SharePoint framework solutions. Uh, in our case, we don't have a SharePoint framework solutions deployed, so we don't actually have any permissions yet created, but we can actually create those manually as well. So in, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go to API access, and that's going to basically make sure that my SharePoint framework app registration is created within my tenant settings. I'm going to show you this one in, in the, uh, practice in a second. You can access this in, uh, location uh, from the SharePoint Admin Center also. If you go to the API access and this page, it's going to actually take a while to load first time you're there because it's creating the app permission registration directly to the Azure AD or to the Entra ID, whatever we want to call it nowadays. So now when the page has been loaded, we know that it's it's actually the baseline configuration for API access is working properly. How would I then actually grant those permissions? Well, in the case of SharePoint Framework Solution, when SharePoint Framework Solution is getting deployed, it will request those needed permissions. In our case, as we're using the cards, and this is a preview version and preview experience, there's no easy way to do this other than actually going to the Entra ID and manually grant those permissions. So let's actually do that. So let me go to the Microsoft 365 Admin Center and show all. And I wanna actually go to the identity side because that's actually to Entra ID or Azure AD uh, location. It's not that just the identity, it's all of the other settings in the tenant as well. And every single Microsoft 365 tenant has this. In here, I can then go to the applications and then I can go to app registrations. And in the app registrations, underneath owned application, which is the default thing, I don't have anything, but if I go to the all applications, uh, we will actually see all of the registered uh, principles within a tenant. And these are the ones which are now the interesting one, the SharePoint Online Client Extensibility Web Application Principle. This is the app registration in the tenant, which was created as we went to the app API page and admin page. And this is the one which is controlling what permissions we are granting the card designer to have or SharePoint framework solutions to have. And we can actually manually grant those permissions here as well. 
So what that means is that now I can actually go to the API permissions and I can uh, add permissions and I want to grant people, the card designer people to be able to hit certain permissions. So I'm going to use Microsoft Graph in my case. And uh, in our case, we're going to use delegated permissions. And then I'm going to grant uh, access uh, to calendar. And underneath calendars, there's a lot of other permissions in here. We want to grant access to read user calendars because we're looking into granting the application permissions to show current users calendar information. That's good. So let's actually do that one. And then I want to add one more, which is about the emails. So I'm going to actually do the email, uh, quick email API implementation as well. And let me actually go directly in here so we can see all of the mail settings. Maybe. Email. There we go. No, I want to have a mail read. Do I, do I need to do this? Yes, I need to do this. There we go. Now it's working properly. Read user email is the permissions, what I'm looking into doing. And I'm going to actually add a permission over there. So now there's two different permissions being granted. Now coming back on the, the question related on site collection specific app catalog for this purpose, unfortunately this has to be done in the primary app catalogs because again behind of the API calls we are using the tenant level permissions. So this does not you're not able to just grant ten, uh, tenant level permissions or this craft permissions to a solution which is in app catalog in a site collection app catalog. Now, what we're doing here is that we're looking into giving these two permissions, calendar read and mail read, dynamically for the dashboard designer so that the card designer can actually use them. And in my case, I'm going to do grant admin consent so the administrator actually is granting uh, permissions to use those. And now we can see the status here, which is basically saying that permission granted, that permission granted. And that means that delegated permissions is being granted to use these two things. And that again means as it's delegated, it's the combination of this app registry app, app which is running and the user specific permission. So technically what it means is that as a user, I can access then my calendar information or any other calendar which I have been granted permissions using any other uh, you know, exchange permissions. But technically simplifying things, that was highly confusing. Simplifying things, what it means is that me as an end user can access my calendar information and I can access my mail uh, information when I'm using this application. Simplifying things, that's kind of how it works. Now, as I granted those permissions in here, now what it means is that I, I can actually go back on the dashboard. Let me refresh. Let me actually do one more hard refresh, double checking again. Just a bit of a caching going on in some of these things, so uh, we need to be a bit uh, thoughtful on that one. I'm going to go to my uh, meetings, and the idea here was to show the upcoming meetings which are happening. Oop, that's not what I was intended to click. So I'm going to scroll back here. I'm going to go and select data source being a Microsoft Graph API. And then we need to actually figure out which API. So in my case, um, I've actually saved uh, the API information uh, in my sample data. So what we're going to do is then we're going to paste in the API information, Graph API information, which we're going to hit. Easiest way to figure out these things would be going to Graph Explorer. Graph Explorer is the location where you're able to test things and API things. What is my, for example, my email? How would that look like? And when I'm executing, how the output would look like? And then you're able to actually figure out um, the, the, what is the output and how do I combine that, for example, with Adaptive Card. All of that information is available directly in Microsoft uh, Graph Explorer. Now, in my case, we actually already prepared a bit of a, a more complicated thing. Uh, or nicer, more polished UI. So I'm hitting V1, V events. I'm going to take five. I don't think that filter actually works in this endpoint. And then we're selecting certain fields. I can click test, and that will validate that my call is actually working. There's no exceptions. So, and I got actually data JSON response preview. So I got actually data back within a JSON format. So technically, I know that my API call is now working. Now, to be able to present that nicely, I will need to have a template JSON. Again, we could use Adaptive Card Designer uh, to come up with a nice designer, uh, which we're going to use for presenting. This is the Adaptive Card Designer at Adaptive Cards IO and Designer. 
And in here, I have prepared a custom UX already. So I can actually validate that it works nicely within Adaptive Card. Let me go to Viva Connection. And oh, is that, that's not what I'm actually trying to do. Do, 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 do. There we go. That's what I'm trying to do. That's the data thing. And here's my cool looking template in Adaptive Card. So basic idea here in my Adaptive Card is that I'm showing a nice picture and then I'm showing a text, and then I have a loop which is going through and, and basically looping the upcoming meetings um, in a loop, whatever came out in the API call. A bit complicated, but again, I can now come in here. I can copy my, my layout uh, for the, for the uh, upcoming meeting, uh, presenting the upcoming meetings. There's my core looking layout. I can say apply, and we can say publish and everything should be working now properly. So whenever I'm clicking the emails or the cart, we will show a quick view and we should be getting the end results out uh, and dashboard would be looking. Now, in my case, something is wrong. Let's actually see if I can figure out what I did wrong. All right, oh, let me actually move that one over there. Let me go in edit mode. Let me go in here. And let me see if I can actually get this one fixed uh, properly. Uh, we're going to actually data source for whatever reason is being reset to define your own data. That's the wrong thing. So call graph API. Let me do this one more time. And I will take the, the graph endpoint. I will get rid of the this one. There we go. Let's click test. There we go. Data endpoint is working. And let me click apply. Let me go in here, double checking, hopefully it didn't reset. It did not reset everything. I will do refresh, a republish. And on this time, clicking the emails, we can actually see my upcoming emails directly from my calendar. And, and within the individual, not the emails, sorry, the meetings, uh, and within the individual uh, meeting in file, for example, Sync with Melissa, I can directly then link this one and that will be redirecting me to the meeting details directly in Outlook. This deep link does work within a mobile and within within a, a, a tablet, and then I can access the information and join the meeting. So that's actually pretty complicated way uh, for the initial setup. But then when after the initial setup is being done, now my card designer, the person who is responsible of actually creating these cards, can do a lot of cool stuff. So now I can go to the card designer, I can, for example, modify this to say, uh, title to say, emails. And then modify the icon to be something relevant. Uh, oop, let me, that's not what I was trying to do. Let's go to the icon selection, change that one. Let's say mail. And select mail there. And then I can go and say e, uh, latest latest emails, my latest emails. Whenever the card is being clicked, what's going to happen? We want to actually show the quick view so we can easily access the information. Let's actually say emails. Now we can see the typo there. That's not meeting. Why is it saying emails? Hmm. I have a, my brain is, is doing two things at the same time. This is the one which I want to do emails. The other one is the one which is planned to do um, actually meetings. So here I have a templating uh, JSON. Let me go and copy that one. And there we go. And in our case for the emails, because we granted that permission, uh, the email URL is a bit different. Uh, let's see how, uh, how what we're looking into doing here. And we're hitting the graph endpoint. We're hitting the V1 endpoint. And we're saying me, mail folders, inbox. And then we are taking top five uh, emails from there. I can again click the test. That will basically give me the data JSON uh, response preview here. That means that it's working. And now I can say apply. Before I test that one, I will actually come in here and fix one more thing. And saying meetings. There we go. Now it makes more sense. And now I can republish. And we can double check that the email section is working properly as well. So this one is for the latest meetings, which are coming to the upcoming meetings, my upcoming meetings using the Graph API. And the other one is my latest emails. And there we go. So uh, in, in the role of uh, Nestor, 
apparently I have sent him a email related on PMP weekly interview and then the Nestor has sent an email to himself and again here as well we have a deep linking and support directly going to the Outlook so you're able to access the information directly from here so that's actually really really cool so Again, the idea being that the fact that then regardless of the device, you have a nice quick dashboard. You can easily access, oh, those are my upcoming meetings. I don't need to flip between the application. You can just create a one card which works in any device and you can easily access the latest emails and also the latest meetings. Cool, quickly uh, on, the, on the slides in here. Uh, the card designer experience which I showed today is a bit complicated and as you saw that it's pretty small, all of the URL testing and all of that gets complicated. So uh, in early 2024, uh, we will actually have a much more sophisticated designer in place. Uh, so you will, you're able to have a more dynamic previews and capabilities and all of that available as you're designing those cards. We'll get you more tutorial videos, documentation, all of that uh, available as part of the next release. Currently, we have a relatively small uh, minimal documentation in place, how to enable this and get some preview feedback. But basic idea again is to empower the card uh, sorry, the dashboard designers so that they are able to hit the APIs, they're able to do things without writing code. Um, yes, you need to understand graph APIs, you need to understand adaptive cards, but no code needed as such, which is really, really cool. Cool, that was the card designer support. Um, hopefully, uh, I can see Anthony being at least uh, happy about that one. That's pretty, pretty cool. Now, this is a bit of a confusing. Uh, I'm going to flip to the next demo. So I'm going to do two demos today or, or recap. Actually, the, the next thing is about deprecation and end of life for SharePoint add-ins. I wanted to call out a few things, the timeline and what's happening there. You might have actually seen this, but we want to make sure that everybody is aware that the SharePoint add-ins are going to go away uh, and you should be thinking on what's the implications for you. So let's actually do that uh, as a separate demo. So deprecation and end of life for SharePoint add-ins. Uh, we finally announced this. We've been teasing uh, that the deprecation is coming, uh, but uh, we wanted to actually make sure that all of the internal organizations and plan is in uh, locked. So we're able to give you full lifecycle deadlines and all of that uh, as part of this announcement. We did announce this uh, in end of uh, November or early December. So a few weeks back, but we want to make sure that everybody is up to date on what's happening. And we'll give you tooling which will make you sure that you know is SharePoint add-ins being used within your tenant. So there are tooling already available today which you're able to use and, and execute which will give you the summary of how add-ins are being used which is super super important. Now what does this mean in practice? So SharePoint add-ins was introduced back in uh, uh, 2012, uh, so more than 10 years ago. Uh, we did one of the feedback what we got related on deprecating SharePoint add-ins was like, well, yeah, this is a great sign of Microsoft uh, shutting down awesome things. Well, how many SaaS providers in the world can say that they have extensibility model which is supported over 10 years? Not that many. So again, it's 2023, we're giving you now heads up that we will deprecate and there's an end of life SharePoint add-ins. We're not shutting it down immediately. We'll give you a heads up that it's shutting down in April, 2026. So if you're using SharePoint adding model, you should be figuring out how do you actually modernize that technology stack, which was introduced 2012. It is outdated technology. We want everybody to use newer technologies like Power Platform and SharePoint Framework and all of the, the different options which are available. It's time to you know, move forward. Um, SharePoint Framework is by default uh, the kind of a modernization target for UX extensibility, but of course, depending on what kind of capability it is, maybe the Power Platform is more suitable. Depends on, depends on the case. The key here is to understand the dates. First of all, right now, that's where we are today. So we did announce this by end of November, uh, where, where we announced that the SharePoint add-in uh, model is going to be retired and the Azure ACS retired as well. Technically, Azure retired ACS, which is the authentication model already many, many years ago. We in SharePoint, uh, we actually kept it alive for the SharePoint adding model and for the workflows. But now we are announcing that all of that is going to go away. The timeline will look as following. So starting from March 2024, within, within 
uh, next quarter, uh, we are stopping accepting new SharePoint add-ins in the store as a submissions. Um, so existing adding uh, capabilities within the store still work, but we are stop accepting new submissions in the store because again, adding model is going to go away. Why would you get your offering in the store? Because that makes no sense. Uh, then starting from July 24, add-ins can no longer be installed from a store. That is a pretty fast timeline, but again, uh, add-ins are not super widely used from the store. Add-ins are primarily used uh, as a site loader capability within a tenant. So we're not saying this is a massive challenge uh, for the most of the most of the uh, our providers and most of the customers. Then on tw after 12 months of this initial announcement, and the new tenants can no longer use add-ins anymore. So if, if customers are creating new tenants or you're creating a new tenant, uh, they can no longer use add-ins and they can no longer use Azure ACS anymore. Azure ACS, for example, is being used when you use app rec new or registering and adding within a SharePoint site. So that's all going to go going away in new tenants. Any existing tenant will actually have all of these capabilities still live until April 2026. So we're giving you two and a half uh, years almost heads up that the capability is going to go away. So add-ins will stop working in April 2026 and Azure ACS will stop working in 20, April 2026. And it's important that everybody is figuring out, okay, what do I need to do by that time? Uh, and also SharePoint 2013 workflows will stop working because there's a dependency between ACS and those workflows. Again, we have more and more capabilities, so this should not be coming as a massive shock. We have Power Automate, we have SharePoint Framework, we have uh, SaaS uh, capabilities other than SharePoint add-ins available. Now, on the SharePoint adding model retirement, uh, the storyline is relatively simple. For SharePoint hosted add-ins, uh, we're basically saying use SharePoint Framework solution as the default entry. Again, it might be a Power Platform is a suitable one for some of the kind of scenarios. Definitely welcome. SharePoint Framework uh, is not going to go away. We have tens of millions of monthly active users for custom SharePoint Framework solutions, and we keep on investing on that one and evolving that forward. So it is a safe bet, uh, getting a lot of lot of uh, future uh, years uh, in ahead of it. Provider hosted add-ins, uh, that basically means that you are looking into doing a SaaS solution or a web application secured by Azure AD. Uh, so not as a provider hosted add-in, but as a application registered in intra-ID intra -ID or Azure AD. That's kind of the direction where we're heading. Uh, maybe the one thing to call out there is that the remote event receivers are impacted as well. Um, and the intention there is to use webhooks. There's no exact match for the, some of the remote event receiver capabilities, but we're looking into providing you additional guidance and input uh, around these things in the future as well. On the Azure ACS retirement, this is relatively straightforward as well. Uh, for tenant level permissions, we do have an Azure AD application or Entra ID registration. You're able to do similar level uh, granting of the permissions in those. And then there's a type B, uh, so the so-called type B uh, permissions, which are web level permissions and list level permissions in add-ins. And that one will get an update relatively soon by definitely by way ahead of the, the end of life for add-ins. So RSC resource specific consent uh, will be available for uh, SharePoint all up and that will give you the permissions to grant permissions on web level or in a list level as well. So that's coming relatively soon as well. So as a summary uh, within the last minutes, a uh, quick recap. Uh, so November 2023 announced July 24, SharePoint Dynamics cannot be installed from Marketplace or Store anymore. Uh, you can install them if you, they are within your app catalog, but you cannot acquire them from Store anymore. November, November 2024, SharePoint Dynamics uh, not used anymore for new tenants. April 2026, no longer uh, in other tenants. How do you want to do this? You want to use the, the assessment tooling, uh, which will give you insights where the add-ins are being used within your tenant. Then we have additional guidance available for you to understand, OK, I found this kind of a functionality. What do I need to do now? That guidance exists. And then you're able to actually disable uh, the add-in model usage, ACS model usage whenever the time is right for your tenant using SharePoint PowerShell uh, settings. Our guidance and assessment tooling is available at AKMS Assessment Add-in ACS. Uh, thank you, David, for copying the, that, those links also within the chat. That's quickly recapping on that one. 
we are on the last minute of the call. So that was a quick recap on what's happening within the deprecation and end of life for SharePoint add-ins. Super important to be aware of that. The next call will happen on 9th of January as we recapped when we started. Uh, so we will have a two weeks holiday break uh, within the calls. So not next week and the week after. But on 9th of January, we will come back with a uh, cool topics on Microsoft Teams Toolkit, uh, Fluid Framework, and also Microsoft 365 Copilot extensibility scheduled already there on 9th of January. In the meantime, if you have questions, you want to engage with the community, please take advantage also on our Discord channel at the AKMS Community Discord. Great, great, great option to engage. More than 1,000 people are already active within this channel, which is awesome. We also are always looking into feedback back related on these demos and topics and calls, please, please, please let us know uh, what, uh, what is what's working and what's not working that will help us uh, on adjusting things uh, in the future. The recording of this call will be available within 24 hours at Microsoft 365 Power Platform Community YouTube channel. You are able to subscribe there and know whenever that is available. And we'll, of course, use Twitter as uh, typically uh, to share you the updates uh, which are available when the update is available. Again, the next call on January 9th, uh, so not next week and the week after because of the holiday break. But that's it for now. Happy holidays for everybody. Thank you for joining. Uh, thank you, Marcel, for the great demo of today. Thank you for the lovely active discussion in the chat. I will try to follow up on if I didn't answer all of the questions there during my presentation. There was so much to talk about over there as well. Enjoy the holiday break if you have an option to do that. Uh, charge 2024 will be awesome. Uh, and uh, all the best for the rest of the week as well. Thanks, everybody. We'll be in touch. Bye-bye.